Gun Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network. Welcome to Gun Sports Radio, all about shooting, hunting, self defense, and more. Now, here are the hosts of Gun Sports Radio, Dave Stahl and Lance Belke. All right, folks. Hey, welcome. You are listening to Gun Sports Radio. This is FM 96 1 AM 1170, The Answer. And this segment is brought to you by Gun Range San Diego, the Nordstrom's of gun ranges. Let me tell you what, folks. If you've never been to a gun range, this is the one I highly recommend you go to. They specialize in first-time shooters, and they specialize in people that have been shooting forever and ever and ever. They can gauge your expertise and your talent the minute that you walk in the door, and they will treat you just like family. 7853 Balboa Avenue. I like calling it the Nordstrom's of gun ranges, just not the price. 10 to 10, seven days a week. Go to the website, thegunrangesandiego.com, thegunrangesandiego.com. Make sure you tell them you heard it right here on our big-time radio show, yep. Gun Sports Radio. All right, well, we've got Michael Schwartz in the house. We've even got Lance Pelkey. He's here he in is. here as well. We're going to be talking to George Lee, but before we do that, we have to stump the nephew. Stump my nephew. Okay, uh, it's a segment that we do where we ask my nephew – who is a, uh, I, I think the, the right gun term would nut. be, he'd be a, a mensch, a mensch, a mensch. M- when it comes to uh, uh, gun history and, and gun knowledge. So, Sam, are you there? Hello? There he doing? is. All right. So, Eva writes in, uh, and here's the question. This is a quick, uh, might be an easy one for you, but let's see. Quick, quick, quick question. Okay, here it is. Who or what is an Uzi named after? A pizza. A pizza. Okay, uh, thank you, Eva, for submitting the question. Um, and Uzi is named after one of the designers, Uzi Elgal. Um, it, it actually wasn't exclusively his design. It was uh, there was a lot of influence from. Okay, the- don't rub it in. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll stop. Is this kid amazing or what? Great That's awesome, job. Eva. You do not get a T-shirt. You did not stump my nephew. Very good. Awesome for a job, Sam. That's because you don't have any T-shirts. Mm. I know, right? Yeah, that's the deal. I don't think you even have a T-shirt. All right, we'll study up. I got a hard one for you next week. Okay, Thanks I hope call so. it in. Excellent All right, job. Sam. Keep Thanks, keep Sam. reading them books, buddy. Okay, right. our first guest is uh, an attorney. His name's George Lee, and George is suing the sheriff of Riverside County, a guy named mm. Stan Sniff, uh, having to do with his CCW policy, and he's doing it on behalf of Calguns Foundation. I wanted to have him on the radio sure. today to talk more about it. George, are you there? I am here, yes. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. So uh, no we wanted to start with, uh, first off, what's the, what's the name of the lawsuit? Who's who's the uh, the uh, defendant? Plaintiff. Plaintiff. Uh, the, the plaintiff in this case, his name is Ari Van Nieuwenhuizen. And uh, he's a Dutch citizen, um, uh, or is he's was born in the Netherlands, and he's been living here in the United States uh, since 1990. And since 1993, he's been a lawful permanent resident of the United States, which is basically a green card holder. Okay. Okay. And he now tell us what happened. What what does that have to do with the sheriff of Riverside County? And, and tell us exactly what happened and why the lawsuit. Sure. This is a very straightforward civil rights case. And and the central question is whether lawful permanent residents like Mr. Van Nieuwenhuizen has has the right to a CCW if all other qualifications are met. And the answer to that question is a resounding yes. And that's not just our opinion. That's been affirmed by every other uh, court in the country to have faced this issue. Uh, th- this issue has been brought multiple times, in, uh, including by Second Amendment Foundation, which is one of the clients that I represent in this case. Uh, so we're not breaking new ground. This is a very straightforward uh, situation, and every court has agreed that if you are here legally and lawfully and you are a lawful permanent resident, you really can't be denied the right to carry if your state allows you to do that. And how do you know? How do you know that it's his it's his uh, his status his, his his citizenship status that is preventing him from sure. getting a CCW? Sure, the, the Riverside Sheriff's policy states that you need to have a birth certificate or proof of your naturalization. Uh, and so uh, mm. Ari, we'll call him Ari because it's probably easier uh, for us to refer him to, as Ari. 
Okay. Uh, called the Riverside Sheriff to start the process, which uh, is, they say it's the first step, is to call and make an appointment. And uh, he was told at that time that you need to be a, a U.S. citizen to even apply uh, for CCW. So that's how we got there. So he couldn't even apply. He tried to apply and couldn't even get that far in the process. He doesn't even get that far because they say you have to be a U.S. citizen to even apply. And you need you need a citi- proof of citizenship, basically, in order to even apply. So I guess that answers that question how, as to whether or not he's that, eligible. It's pretty clear. Now, how has uh, I, I have my opinions and I've heard a bunch of opinions. But in your, your opinion, how would you say uh, Sheriff Sniff's CCW policies have been uh, while he's been in office? Well, I I can't speak to his policies because this lawsuit is really designed to do one thing, is that's to remedy one bad policy that he has. Now, like you, I've heard that he's he's uh, generally permissive and liberal on uh, on issuing CCWs, and if that's the case, that you know he's to be applauded for that. Um, but so this isn't any kind of reflection on Stan Sniff or his is a, a reflection on him as a person. I'm sure he's a fine person. But this is uh, solely about remedying a bad policy, and this is a bad policy. I've actually heard that his policies aren't all that great. They're okay. Um, they're certainly better than, uh, you know, L.A. County. Um, but I've heard that, uh, you know, for a while there were two-year backlogs, um, that, uh, you know, it was really kind of a good old boy system. Um, and that it wasn't all that great. It was okay, but it wasn't all that I've great. I've heard those things. I've heard those things too, but honestly, that that doesn't really matter. As That's got nothing to do with your case. case. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Listen, if 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 he likes to tout having a ninety eight percent approval rate uh, for CCW applications, that's great. Um, but we think he could do better. Uh, and in fact, uh, if if you don't let a sizable number of people apply in the first place. It's, I right. don't know that that's, that's any kind of statistic that, that means anything. Yeah, so you don't, we think that we, we think that he could do better. If you don't let people apply, then yeah, you're going to have a pretty high percentage uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, your, your approval. Rate. Hey, I have a quick question for you. Um, can your client vote? He cannot vote. No, he is. Uh, that is one of the things that you can't do as a non-citizen, and that is vote, uh, serve on a jury, and several other things that are sort of like political um, mm. political rights. And, and so that, that completely makes sense. You can't hold certain high offices, um, and so that's fine. But we're talking about something that's a fundamental constitutional right sure. that uh, that I don't think you can just as easily deny somebody that based on their citizenship. Okay, status. And clarify something for me, if you will. So there's a there's a green card status for people, and then there's a naturalized citizen. Which one is he? Well, he's a he's a green card uh, holder, which is a lawful permanent resident holder. Okay, and a naturalized citizen is somebody who comes to the United States and goes through the citizenship uh, process. Okay, and and you know I have to point out that it. it that there's a minimum five year waiting period for you to even live here in the country before you can become a citizen. So well, sure. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, we all agree that the, the second amendment protects a natural right and that, uh, you know, you don't have to be a citizen to have a natural right. Natural rights are natural. Uh, they're not given to you by the government for sure. And I've actually seen uh, uh, quotes by Sheriff Sniff there where he describes a CCW as a privilege um, rather than describing, you know, oh, carrying concealed as, as something that, you know, yeah. you know, uh, we, we, yourself. We, obviously we disagree that it's a privilege in, in any sense. And, and we point out, and I think everyone that on our side of the equation agrees that the second amendment doesn't grant us any kind of right to carry a firearm or to own a firearm. It, it guarantees a right that's preexisting. And that, that's a human right. Basically, uh, as Heller points out, it's, yes. it's rooted in the in the right of self defense, which is basic to everyone. So, you can't say that 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 the Second Amendment protects a a fundamental right, and at the same time say, well, but but, but only for citizens. The, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Now, listen, this sounds pretty fundamental to the Second Amendment. It's I, I know uh, your work, and I know the work of. Cal Guns Foundation, you guys are rock solid, unapologetic when it comes to the Second Amendment. 
And I, I, ha- I got to bring this up. A few days ago, CRPA, California Rifle and Pistol Association, described you guys as a fake Second Amendment uh, case and a fake Second Amendment organization. Uh, could you respond to that? Yeah, I mean, it's really unfortunate that we would get that kind of criticism, but it's misguided. And and listen, we, we feel we appreciate that they they feel obligated to protect their their friends. And, you know, they endorsed a sheriff sniff. And so they feel they need to to protect them. And and so we appreciate that. It's, it, it's unfortunate. But at the end of the day, people's rights and the Constitution is more important than political alliances or political friendships. And yep. And to say that we're not a, that the organizations I re- represent are not, you know, the true uh, gun rights organizations is is just totally misguided. You always see, you hear that kind of criticism, by the way, coming our way, but you never hear our, our, us criticizing them. Um, and so why is that? Yeah, I agree. I because, you know, you know, someone someone just doesn't like that someone else is occupying this space. And uh, and that's unfortunate because there's a lot of common ground that we can work to, uh, uh, together on. And there's a lot of work that needs to get done. You know, I, I'm, I'm under the impression that it's gun owners against elected officials who, who are trying to take away your Second Amendment right. You know, I can't believe that they'd side with the, uh, with the official on this. But thank you very much for what you're doing. I appreciate you coming on the show. And uh, I, I hope you win your case. Thank you, George. Okay. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks, appreciate George. It. All right, folks. Hey, we're going to take a small break, but hey, don't forget Trident Gunsmithing. You got to get that gun worked on. Man, I'm telling you what, best gunsmithing store in town. Go to www.tridentgunsmithing.com. They can take care of vintage, black powder, modern, shotgun, you name it. It's broke. They can fix it. Tridentgunsmithing.com, tridentgunsmithing.com. Hey, up next, right after the break, John Dillon's going to give us a call and talk to us about the gun laws in California. Then Gun Range San Diego, you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. All right, folks. Hey, this is FM 96 AM 1170. That's right. We now are an FM station for all you North County folks. AM 1170 for everybody in San Diego. You can go to the kcbq and download their free kcbq app you can listen to us on iheart radio if you have a computer that works you can go there as well trust me we are intelligent conservative talk radio and this is the only gun show i'm aware of here in san diego county but hey before we get into that are you frustrated by the new california laws from for ars or pretty much every other law that california has yeah. Are you looking for a cost-effective and easy solution that will allow you to keep your AR featureless yet still be compliant? Well, Cali Key easily converts your AR to be California compliant in just two minutes. Keep your entire collection intact at a price you can afford. Check out the new Cali Key and Future Proofs, your AR from future gun laws. Go to CaliKey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y.com. Hey, are you frustrated? And is your fan, uh, do you, are you frustrated? Do you or any of your family keep a taser, pepper spray, firearms, or other weapons? Well, what are you going to do You know, if you're trying to get a CCW? And then say you get in trouble and they arrest you. Where are you going to come up with the money for the bail and expensive lawyers? Well, if you could just afford $10 a month for your whole family, not just you, your whole family, firearms legal protection will take care of you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you could very easily get our next guest, John Dillon, as one of your representatives firearmslegal.com, firearmslegal.com. Make sure you check them out, and hopefully you'll get John Dillon, because if you do, you will get the best. Mr. Dillon at Gatsky Dillon and Balance LLP. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you guys? So what are you doing today? Tell the truth. Well, first I got to correct you a little bit. Uh, that The Kelly Key, great little product, it doesn't actually make your gun featureless. It allows you to keep all your features, but it converts your semi-automatic to a manual bolt-action rifle. Uh, you can keep all your features, and you don't uh, get into trouble. So, thanks for keeping uh, me out of jail. I take you on that one. Thanks <laughs> for keeping me. Thanks for keeping me out of jail. Of course. All right. So, um, I actually did want to jump on the back, uh, you know, George Lee and uh, his case 
uh, against the Sheriff Smith in Riverside. I wanted to kind of give a a third party perspective on this because you know I'm not affiliated uh, with the case in any way, but I I was told about it as soon as it happened, and uh, to be honest, I'm I'm actually a fan of this, and I'll tell you there's some very specific reasons why. Uh, George did a really good job summarizing that case and uh, what they're trying to do there. Uh, but I wanted to highlight some of the things that have been said from Sheriff Sniff uh, as a response to this lawsuit. Uh, he, he's outlined, you know, the Second Amendment Foundation, Madison Society, and Arms Policy Coalition as extremist groups that want permits to be handed out like popcorn on the corner of the streets. Um, and the, the funniest part is, is in no way, shape, or form does, does this case want anything like that. They, they simply want a man to be able to apply for and get a, a concealed weapons permit because he is a lawful resident of the United States. Uh, we're not... Ha- no one's demanding that the sheriff just start throwing CCW permits out of the window as he drives to work every morning. So, uh, but one of the biggest things is, is uh, there was a quote in an article I read where he was talking about the, the Riverside Sheriff's sound public policy that we carefully are screening all individuals applying to carry on their person a hidden uh, loaded handgun in our public areas. And the part to, to pay attention is, he says, we're carefully screening all individuals. Well, it's very clear that they're not. They refuse to even accept uh, Ari's uh, application for a permit. Uh, and, you know, frankly, they should have accepted it. Uh, it seems from the background that's been given on him, uh, you know, he should have at the very least been considered. And that's one of the big problems that we have when we have these undefined subjective standards of, who can get a concealed carry permit in California. It's based off of the, the head sheriff in each county, and uh, they all have their different opinions, and it just really makes for a, a muddled-up uh, system. It's just it's not right. Uh, and George also hints on this, you know, our Constitution, it's all about negative rights. When uh, we talk about negative rights, those rights are worded as in the government may not do this. The government cannot take this from you. Uh, you know, they may not keep you from bearing arms. They may not search your home without due process and warrant. You know, these are negative rights. Uh, they're not positive rights. The Constitution did not grant us certain rights. Uh, you know, they just codified the rights that were already existing. And I think those are really important ideals that people need to pay attention to when they're considering cases like this. John, I think that's an excellent point that, you know, no one's asking Sheriff Sniff to change his policies uh, or change his standards. Just do it. Uh, Just apply it. Apply it to people who have the natural right to bear arms and stop pretending that it's some kind of privilege. And uh, didn't we have the same problem here in San Diego? Well, yeah. Yeah. Sort of, kind, of, kind of, kind of. I, I mean, mean, they must have went to the same high school together. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you have, you have Ari, who is he's legally able to purchase and own firearms. Uh, so why wouldn't he be able to apply to get a field carry permit? He would still have to meet all the standards. He'd still have to do the training, just like everyone else. Uh, he's not asking for special treatment. He's quite frankly asking to be treated equally, and that's it. Right. Uh, it's, well, it's not a, a crazy ideal. It really isn't. Well, I got a twist. It just came to me. Think about this, John, because you know how, you know, the other side always wants to take everything away and, and, and do what have you. Well, why not pitch it to them this way? If you want to keep track of all of us people that own guns, then let us all have CCWs. That way you have background us to death. And as long as we qualify, guess what? Now you have all our information. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, it, well, the problem is with that, in California, they already do. Uh, every gun owner registers their firearm to their name upon purchase. Right. Uh, the background checks are done with both uh, dealer and private party sales, all sales, all transfers. So, you know, 
it's not like they're getting any more information from, uh, you know, these people when they're applying for CCWs. But, you know, th- it's the right to bear arms, uh, to keep and bear arms, and it's for the people. It's not for the special people. It's not for the people that we deem worthy. It's for the people. It's society. It's the public. Well, then, it, uh, And with, if you want that... Then with that, with, then with that thought, then every time you buy a weapon and you get all the background check... And you should automatically get a CCW. Well, you should opt, be able to opt in to right. apply for it in the same paperwork. I, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I yeah. So where's the there again? And I will say it again, and I will say it on every show. If you don't want me to have a CCW, if you want to take my guns away, I'll do it. Once you tell me how you're going to eradicate the guns from the criminals, long as you can do that, then I'm I'm listening. Yeah, and, and to be quite frank, you know, if people want to consider this a political ploy or, you know, some political tactic, you know, there's a very simple, quick, and easy fix to this that doesn't require the sheriff to defend himself uh, in court. Change his policy, allow legal uh, residents of this country to apply for CCWs. Bingo. Uh, once you do that, you're, you're done. Uh, that's it. Well, so, what if, what, um, even if it is, I, I just had to throw in my two cents there. No, that was really valuable, John. I really appreciate it. But let's say it is a political ploy. Good. We need to start doing more political yeah. ploys on people that are right. not respecting our Second Amendment rights. Thank you. Thank you. Finally. Yeah, I, there's really nothing wrong uh, with this case that I see. And, uh, you know, if you want to consider me an extremist for supporting us, fine by me. Uh, yeah. So, I, I don't think following the Constitution is a very extreme point of view. Now, sign us up. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, buddy. Hey, yeah. folks, if you ever, ever need a lawyer when it comes to your gun ownership, cafirearmslaw.com, cafirearmslaw.com. And if you don't have a computer, 760-431-9501. You will get John Dillon, and he will take care of you like family. Make sure you tell him you heard it right here on FM 961 AM 1170, The Answer, because we would appreciate it. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, a whole lot more right here on Gun Sports Radio. All right, folks, welcome back to Gun Sports Radio, FM 96, 1 AM 1170, The Answer. I'm Dave, he's Lance, and this segment is brought to you by Trident Gunsmithing, 858-577-0576. Your connection for gun repairs, upgrading, and more. And if you're a hunter, that's where you need to be. Trident Gunsmithing specializes in hunting classes. They'll even teach you how to cook the game you catch or shoot. So go to tritongunsmithing.com if you've got a black powder, regular gun, modified, whatever you want to do when it comes to your guns, this is the place to go. Triton Gunsmithing. Go to tritongunsmithing.com. Hey, are you frustrated by the new California laws for ARs? Well, looking for a cost-effective and easy solution that will allow you to keep your AR featureless yet still be compliant? Cali Key easily converts your AR to be California compliant in just two minutes. Keep your entire collection intact at a price you can afford. Check it out. The new Cali Key and future-proof your AR from future gun laws. Go to CaliKey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y, K-A-L-I-K-E-Y.com. All right. Hey, this segment is brought to you by Gun Range San Diego, 7853 Balboa Avenue, 10 to 10, seven days a week. Go to their website, TheGunRangeSanDiego.com, TheGunRangeSanDiego.com. You will find more things to do. Bring your family. Bring your friends. These guys love first-time shooters, and they totally respect the seasoned shooter as well. So it's a one-stop shop. That's why I call it the Nordstrom's of gun ranges, just not the price. Hey, we got Casey on the line. Hey, Casey, how's it going, bud? Pretty good. How are you guys doing? Eh, you know, probably having almost as much fun as you. Yeah, I'm trying. Just starting my day here. Oh, well, there you go. You should be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed by now. <laughs> and uh, Michael Schwartz and I just got back from shooting sporting sporting clays up at the uh, Lemon Grove Rod and Gun Club, so I don't know who smells worse right now. <laughs> well, <laughs> my <wasn't>. score, <laughs> my score smells worse. That's why I've got my fan I going. Uh, I live right next. To, uh, I live right down the street from Lemon Grove Rod and Gun Club. Oh, so you you, you watched us miss yep. then? 
I hear them all day long. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, good deal. I'm an Alpinian myself, so glad to know okay. you're in Is the neighborhood. What they call that? I was I was actually born in Alpine in a Jeep, so wow. about as Alpine and Alpinian as it gets. No kidding. That's yeah. wow. <laughs> That's Jeez. pretty Al- Alpinian. Yeah, no yeah, kidding. Yep, yeah, right there. Boulder Oak Elementary School. I was born in that parking lot across in that church parking lot there. Oh, you really were born in a Jeep. <laughs> All right. No wonder you talk with a Jeep accent. <laughs> now, if you were delivered by a pit bull and had some Nelson beer in your hand, that would be about as, as alpine, <laughs> as, alpine yeah, as you could get. As good as it got. So what's going on down at Gun Range San Diego? Oh, not much. You know, we're keeping it really busy, especially for a nice Sunday. Uh, coming up December 7th, we do have that grand old time coming up. Going to have guns from World War One, World War Two, Vietnam, Korea. Um, it's going to be from five till closing, and we're going to have actually some of those guns on the rental side, so people can actually come in and experience some of those old weapons, which are just oh so nice. Right. So if you have an uncle or a grandfather or a dad that fought in the war, and you know, and you always wondered what it was like for what he had to haul around and carry, sounds like a good time. Add by all. <laughs> yeah. Back before we had all these polymer guns, now you got those. Good old wood ones back there. <laughs> and they weigh just a tad. Oh, yeah. But they're pretty dependable, though, really, when you come right down to oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. So, I mean, you know, ages change, so, yeah. does, uh, so does our gear and technology, but, yeah. But the fun's in the old guns, I think. You know, for somebody mm-hmm. to be able to take, like, an M14 or an M1. What are some of the vintage guns you think you might have in the rental fleet? Uh, I'm bringing in my 1903 Springfield. We have a couple M1 Garands coming in. Uh, we have a Finnish M39. Um, honestly, it's, you know, we had last year we had an MP40 come in that people could check out. So, you know, this year we have, I think we have like 30 to 40 people that are bringing in different types of firearms. So we're going to actually have a really good selection set up. Now, is there a fee to come down to do this Garand Day, December 7th? Yes. Yeah. So it's going to be the normal range fees when they okay. come down, but it's going to be at a discounted price. But when it comes to the actual displays on it, no. People can just come by, handle the weapons, check them out, just get a feel for our history. Right. Uh, are you guys doing anything else that day? Any other specials like, say, ammo and other other firearms? Um, I'm not aware of that right now, but I can get back to you guys with that information when it comes to me. Well, you're coming back on next week anyway, so you're now the, yep. you are now the voice. Ah, that's me. <laughs> so, Casey, what else are we going? We I, I was down there, uh, saw you the other day. You and I kind of came up with a couple ideas. So, what, mm-hmm. was, what, what were we going to talk about? I forgot. Well, we we're talking about guns and battery, and uh, it's kind of some of the issues that we have. It's not necessarily an issue; it's just kind of the inexperienced shooters. A lot of times, when they're trying out a new firearm, they'll be loading it, and they're not like they're not letting the gun do the work when they're loading it. So by what I mean that is they ride the slide home and it causes a failure to feed. So the gun won't be in complete battery and they're sitting there wondering why this gun isn't shooting. And I have to explain to them, you know, these semi-automatic pistols have a big spring in it. You've got to let the spring do the work and then you won't have these jams in here. So it's kind of one of the common issues that we have, but it's not a big one. It's just, you know, inexperienced shooters have to uh, overcome that. Gotcha. So, so Casey, let me ask you, what does battery mean when it comes to firearms? Battery? So battery is when the slide is fully locked forward with the round in the chamber. That way that when the round the way when the trigger is pulled, the firing pin will actually strike the round. If it's out of battery, you're not going to have the correct length for the striker or for the firing pin to strike the round. Therefore it will not fire. Gotcha. Yeah, that was just for the folks out there that may not have known uh-huh. what that meant. They might have thought you're putting a twelve volt battery on the gun and <laughs> and it would light up the neighborhood That's or something. Right. I don't One know. One of Dave's car shows. <laughs> <laughs> awesome man hey have you ever yeah. li- have you ever listened to the whole show because the reason i bring it uh, up i have i have not yet I'm, I'm don't don't hate me i'm sorry no 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 because you've got to tune in <laughs> you've got to tune in and listen to michael schwartz his nephew because we've been trying mm-hmm. to stump this kid for how many weeks yeah it's it's like a month now a month and a half how old is he he's 19 years old and he is a uh he's a he's a he's well wait, unbelievably uh, here we go he's okay so expert. casey where yes, did sir. the name Uzi come from? So I don't know exactly. Well, the country that made it is actually Israel. And actually the cool part about the Uzi is we just ordered one to come on our rental range. Imagine uh, that. Well, that's pretty good at tap dance now. Well, his his <laughs> nephew. Hey, if they're going to get one, that, that, that works for me. That was Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. 
Yeah, well, I mean, his nephew, oh, yeah, oh, well, let me, well, it's not, re- you know, and he just gives this long dissertation. I yeah. mean, the kid's 19, eats, sleeps, and drinks guns. I didn't even have the answer in front of me anymore, but it was named after the Israeli general that uh, was one of the, he was the main designer on it. Right. He had the guy's name, and he started talking about, you know, who else designed it, and oh, my gosh. How much involved? Yeah, we've been trying to trick him all well, for over a month and a half. and oh, yeah. So, yeah, for if nothing else, when we send you the show, you know, uh, or you know what, better not, better yet, I just need to get your email, send it to either Lance or okay. myself, yeah, and then we'll put you on the distribution. Because it's, it's, trust me, man, if you're into guns, you're going to love to hear this kid because he is amazing. Oh, I got I got some questions for him. I'll, I'll think of some of them. Email, there oh, yeah. you go. Email me. Uh, we need some. Yeah. We got to stump the I'll nephew. Get you so. email hey, and you could win a T-shirt. You can get a San Diego County Ooh. gun owner's T-shirt. Hey. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll consult my friends. I got some really good gun guru friends out there that know just absurd things that you would never think you would need to know or want to know, but they know it. It's like, Ooh. oh, well, this fire pit was designed for this by this guy. I was like, uh, it's a fire intent. I'm going to see you on Friday because I'm going to take that class from John Goss, the CCW class. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. because I got my... My okay from the sheriff. So oh, I'll congratulations! Take, yep, thanks, yeah, thanks. he's got a big rubber stamp on his forehead, so they but they've accepted him. I'll tell you what, that that was a lot of work on Michael Schwartz's part and a whole bunch of other people. So anyway, I'll be there to see John Goss. Anybody who's got their CCW who wants to take it, uh, take their class. John is a terrific guy. I'll be there on Friday for the class, and then uh, you and I can catch up on those. How long is the class? Um, it's eight hours. It's an eight hour class. <laughs> yeah, going to feed you. <laughs> I lost 21 pounds. Wow, there you go. So I guess so, they're not yeah, going to feed yeah. Not me, baby. <laughs> no John, more burgers. John is a very, John's a very knowledgeable mm-hmm. man when it comes to yeah. everything, and especially on the law side of it, you know, what reasonable protections are needed and whatnot. So, yep. yeah, anybody that's looking to do any of your CCW courses, I encourage them to go to him. Yeah, yeah. call the Gun Range San Diego for the CCW courses. They are the center. They've got all the the, the holsters and all the stuff you need you know, once you have it. So they're the center to go to. Very good. All right. Good deal. So uh, the December 7th, that's the that's the big day. But there's a lot of other stuff going on as well, right? Yep. We're going to have some Black Friday sales coming up and a couple other ones. So just stay tuned to that. Follow us on our Instagram. We're going to be starting posting a lot more stuff on our social medias. That's going to kind of keep people updated. Yeah. Well, this is kind of a trick question, but do you know if we're putting our radio shows on Gun Range San Diego's we're, website? We're, we're putting them on that, uh, on. Um, a la- San Diego County Gun Owners website. Okay, we'll good. I just wanted to make sure so that uh, mm-hmm. we knew, so I'll know where to promote. It, and we're going to get Casey to be a member of San Diego County Gun Owners also. What? He's not a member. Who yeah. is what? It? Casey's not a member? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> now, what gonna, now what are you going to do? No pressure, Casey. Yeah, no, no pressure. <laughs> Don't pressurize me, please. Well, well, you just called me out, so I guess I'm going to have to do it now. I there guess you I'm go. Have to be the masses. Michael, throw in a shirt all, for all, you. Yeah, there you go. All self-respecting. All, all pinions. Need That's to be. right. That's I got right. mine. I got my pin and my shirt. So you need to do the same. What and, size shirt are you? Hey, it's ten bucks, Casey. Ten bucks. <laughs> I'm an I am an XL, and I'll be more than happy to to uh, part. Put aside we'll get him the, the well, awesome. polo. So, Casey, how long you been working there? Uh, I've been working here for about four months now. Oh, nice. Okay, good. What, what, yeah. what, what's your background? Yeah, where'd you come from? Uh, background, well, before this, I mean, born right here in San Diego. Uh, joined the Marines back in 2010. Uh, nice. Did four years there. Got out, went to school. Um, graduated from Grossmont, transferred over to San Diego State. Got about a year left there. I'll have my bachelor's in counterterrorism. Wow. And then I'm just kind of I'm just kind of taking a little break here from school. I was at it for like three and a half years straight, and I just burnt out. Sure. So, yeah, so I'm just taking a break here. I'm loving awesome. it. You know, I always want to work in the firearm industry, and I have not been let down at all. I mean, working here is great. Um, I'm on the sales side now, so I'm getting to learn all about how the sales and the process through it, and it's, uh, there's a lot of paperwork. Let's just say that, but it's not bad. <laughs> I, Welcome I, to I California. Well, oh, good. Yeah. I don't know, you know. Well, well you um, know, give my friend Marco a hard time there. Oh, <laughs> you work, you work with that guy. I do it all day. Good. Oh, all day. He's actually here right now. I'm going to go, I'll go mess with him on the range in a yeah, bit. Yeah. Ah, now, what did I'll you do for the Marine Corps? Shoots. Yeah. What was your, what was uh, your I was MOS? A, I was an 0311. I was a grunt. Okay. All right. Very Nothing cool. wrong with that. Thank well, you for your service well, in the Marine Corps. Good times. Yes. Well, now Casey's, the, you know, support. he's another resident uh, expert at, you know, gun range San Diego. So folks, you got questions. Yeah. Casey's go down, see Casey, man, or listen to him uh, every day, you know, every uh, Sunday on the show. That's really happy to have you, my friend. 
All right, buddy. Hey, thank oh, you very much. You, guys. And go give, uh, what is it, Marcos? Marco. Marco. Yeah. Go give Marco a heart. Just, hey, and walk Manny. up walk up to him, smack him in the back of the <laughs> head, and when he turns around and gives you that dirty look, just say, oh, that was from Michael Schwartz. Yeah. There you go. And I'm going to text that Marco, is, and, and I'm going to say, hey, make sure Casey becomes a member, because Marco's been a member for a while now. Ooh. Oh. There you go, is, buddy. Slapping a person is called assault, and it's frowned upon. You should know that. <laughs> nah, it's not. He'll love it. All right, buddy. <laughs> Good talking to you. Look forward to talking to you next week. You too, guys. I'll see you around. All right, All right buddy. Hey, folks, this is FM 961 AM 1170. We are the answer. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. This is FM 961 AM 1170. The answer right here at KCPU. Hey, do you or any of your family keep a taser, pepper spray, firearm, or other weapon? For personal protection, do you have or are you going to get a CCW? If you're involved in an incident, what is your plan to pay for bail and the expensive lawyer costs? Well, talk to the good folks at Firearms Legal Protection for less than $10 a month. That's right, $10 a month. You'll have a peace of mind knowing a 24-hour hotline and legal representation is waiting for you and your family. That's Firearms Legal Protection. Go to www.firearmslegal.com firearmslegal.com, or you can call them at 844-357-9400, or like I said, firearmslegal.com. Make sure you're protected. All right. Well, Lance, who you got uh, in the wings? Well, I thought we'd use the segment that there's a there's a lot of misinformation out there regarding the uh, BLM land closings and all that, supposedly in the East County with Diane Jacobs and that whole deal. So uh, I thought um, what have... Mike Schwartz kind of give us an update on that. And then we've got our buddy, uh, Mike from SD must calling in, but Mike, can you give us a quick little. Sure. Yeah. So there's, there are limited places you can actually shoot on BLM land. BLM land is federal land. So it's owned by all of us. It's public land. There are limited places where you can shoot. There are just a few areas, uh, across, even though there's like a million acres, right? There's just a few areas where you can actually shoot where right. it's safe and accessible and that sort of thing. So the county uh, tried to, well, actually they voted to uh, put uh, uh, those areas on, uh, basically on, on a list of, of places uh, that the county keeps where you can't shoot, even though it's federal land. Right. So they did vote and the vote was? To define the areas and then ban shooting at the, on those areas. So did they come up with a date to ban those areas? Well, they said within 120 days they were going to have the formal proposal. Okay. So they, don't, they haven't banned those areas yet. It hasn't gone into effect. Right. And the good news is it's not going to go into effect. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's never going to go into effect. That's not their land. It's BLM land. We went straight to the top. We were actually talking with the Secretary of the Interior's office, and uh, we've had uh, more than one conference with him, uh, and uh, it, they're not banning shooting. In fact, we're, we're, we're going to start working with them on ways to open up more areas for uh, for shooting, for you know, law-abiding uh citizens who want to go out and do some target practice. Right. So first off, they voted to come up with a ban, but then they had to right. come up with a ban. Right. And so they still they had the 120 days or whatever it is to do that. They haven't done that yet. Well, they can, they can do it all day long. Right. But, but they're, the BLM's right. going to say. Right. BLM's going to come in anyway and say, they're gonna say no. forget you. Yeah, that ain't your land. That's right. Good. So, so And that's that's what it, you know, a couple things, you know, it pays to be involved. Yeah, you, you know, people had to have been involved in order to, to catch this. Right. That could have just blown by. Yep. Like and, a lot of things have. And you have to be organized. You know, uh, you, you can't just pick up the phone and call the Secretary of the Interior. Um, but fortunately, no. uh, San Diego County Gun Owners was able to do it uh, through a, a couple of connections with our members. But that's, you got to be involved. You got to be organized. That's why orga- uh, organizations like ours, it's important to. Uh, to have those and organizations like like Mike Mike Johnson with SD Must. Yeah, yeah we got yeah we got Mike Johnson on the line. Hey Mike, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How you guys doing? Well, we're fighting the fight just like you're fighting yeah. the fight. <laughs> so what's happening with your uh, your your, uh, your group next event? So on on December fifteenth, we're going to have uh, a big cleanup out in Painted Gorge. It's actually out in Imperial County, but a lot of San Diego people go out there. Um, during the winter time, because they like to camp and off road and stuff. Um, so we're actually teaming up with San Diego Off Road Coalition. They're another nonprofit that mm-hmm. 
fights for like off roaders rights out there. So we're gonna team up and have a big cleanup. Did you it's watch K- Did you watch KUSI this morning? Uh, yeah, I saw that. Did you see that? I have been supporting those guys, Cora. I mean, I've supported all of them for years and years and years. And it's so funny now. I'm I'm on doing a gun show and. They're doing the same thing to gun owners that they're trying to do to the off roaders, and nobody's yeah, more always, res- nobody's more respectful than off roaders and gun owners. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. we probably put more time and effort out in the, on this land cleaning it when a lot of other groups that you know I never see the Sierra Club out no. there. <laughs> Sierra <laughs> Club? No, they meet in La Jolla. Yeah, that's or their idea of off road. Any of these other groups that say they care, but I never actually see them out there doing anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. We're all out tell, there quite a bit. <laughs> tell me, because I don't think anybody works harder than you and your organization when it comes to, uh, you know, making sure that these lands are are, are made available for, for us. So tell them just a little bit about what SD Must does. So basically, we, uh, we kind of, our whole thing is get out and get involved. Like, I think people complain a lot online but they never actually go out and do anything about it. So we kind of try to educate people and get people to get involved in their community to actually get out there and do something like either that's through voter registration, you know, show up to these, you know, board meetings and city council meetings, um, go out to, you know, and if you want to exercise your rights for free, you go out to public land, it's our land. But if we don't kind of take care of it, they're going to find other reasons to close it. So Mm -hmm. we've kind of been motivating people to go out, and actually be responsible. So even if we don't have a big organized cleanup, all of our volunteers and people that we've brought out there, when they go out there on a regular basis, they're keeping it clean. And that kind of keeps the trash at bay and it keeps it safer out there. So it's actually funny. A lot of these shooting areas, they actually get more messy when they're technically closed than when they're open. (laughs) When they're open, the responsible people are out there cleaning when it's closed, the responsible people don't go, but the irresponsible people or just people that don't know because right. if you're not paying close attention to all this stuff, you wouldn't even know that it's closed to shooting. So you go out there and, you know, whatever. But we, you know, we kind of try to get people to just get out there and kind of like Boy Scouts, you know, leave it nicer than you found it. <laughs> so what's, uh, how do people get a hold of you if they want to become involved? So if they go to sdmust.org, they can, there's a contact page there where they can reach out to us and we can add them to our volunteer list. And then once they're on our volunteer email list, we kind of send notices out whenever there's a call to action or there's something that they should know about. Um, But we tend to have, we have meet and greets pretty often throughout the year, but then we also have the big cleanup. We have probably about two of those a year, like pretty big organized ones, sometimes more depending on the support we get. But, you know, we run mainly off donations. So right now we mainly need volunteers to show up to these cleanups. Because if we show, if we get people to show up to these cleanups, it kind of shows that we're actually, you know, it's a big effort that shows that we're actually doing our part. So they can't use that as an excuse to try to close areas down because it's like, look, we have people that are willing to do this mm-hmm. for free, basically. So you can't say that we're not doing it because we are. Yeah, Mike, I mean, your your organization, you guys work hard. You guys also play hard. You guys do a lot of things that are really, really fun. Um, but yeah. for sure, uh, you know, the, the Secretary of the Interior and the BLM wouldn't even wouldn't really uh, be as interested in entertaining the idea of opening up more areas and making sure that the areas that want to, the county wants to close stay open. They wouldn't be as interested if not for the efforts of you and your organization. You guys are doing an excellent job, and we all – uh, truly, truly owe you a, a great debt. Yeah, because once they close that, close something, it's even harder oh, yeah. to keep it open, get it opened up it's again. Hard to well, get it back open. Yeah, yeah. That's why I want to have Mike on because, uh, and then you know, like this news about the you know the BLM and you know all this bad information out yeah. there, uh, you know, coupled with everything, and Mike's doing such a good, great, great job, uh, and also with SD Mus. So, I appreciate you out there, you know, doing what you do. It's all of us together, right? Yeah, I mean. I kind of do this for everybody else. So, yeah. I mean, I was doing it in the background for years. And it's funny because people would be like, they're like, yeah, we, you know, all these ranges are getting cleaned up. And it's like, we don't know who's doing it. I'm like, that's been me. Like, <laughs> it's been me and our people. Who like, is our, that our person? Out there. Do you, um, like they all- noticed that all these areas were getting clean and they didn't know who was doing it because I was kind of more 
trying to stay in the background. Yeah, when you you know some of these organizations when they clean, do they 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 weigh, they count all the trash and all that stuff? Do you do that, or you just go get it done? Uh, I I have a running total. I mean, it's hard to weigh the trash. Right. I mean, but basically, that just this last year alone, we've we filled about three like forty what a forty yard roll off. 40 foot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Those big dumpsters? So three of those, we filled about three smaller dumpsters, probably about seven or eight trailers, probably about 20 truck beds. So what do you do? You have dumpsters um, delivered out there or something? Yeah, cause, because we've been actually working with the BLM, sometimes they'll Great. deliver dumpsters to us to fill. Okay. Um, I think we're going to get that for this coming event. They're going to actually deliver one or two dumpsters for us. Oh, that's great. Um, we, we had a big event last year. They did the same thing, but... If, if they don't deliver them, we sometimes um, companies will donate the dumpsters or the dump fees. Um, or, you know, sometimes people will just take on smaller cleanups. We'll just take the trash in our trucks or, mm-hmm. you know, in bags and we'll just dump them in our, you know, yep. trash cans at home kind of over the period of a couple of weeks. But, okay. Wow. Well, folks, you, know, you hear you hear a lot of stuff about, about irresponsible gun owners and here's some very responsible people. Uh, Mike with SDMust.com. Uh, don't forget uh, San Diego County gun owners uh, to make things happen. That's why we do the show, and uh, we appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, we look forward yeah, to getting you. you back on and later on. And if you ever, like I said, if you ever want to do any television, you know, for your for your campaign, all you got to do is let me know. And, and yeah, again, it's nice the, uh, it, the event. your right. your your events December fifteenth, seven to eleven. Yeah. And for more information, they go to sdmust dot org. Sdmust dot org. Thanks. Yeah. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks, Thanks, Mike. Talk to you down the road. Well, folks, that's another fun pack show. We really want to thank San Diego County gun owners. Go to San Diego County gun owners.com and join. Of course, the gun range, San Diego.com, the gun range, San Diego.com. And you can join their program as well. They got all kinds of levels with great benefits. You need a lawyer, CA firearms, law.com. And if you need protection, firearms, legal, Dot com. That's where you'll get protected. And if you need to get that gun worked on, tridentgunsmithing.com. And to get your guns up to stuff, calikey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y.com. Otherwise, thank you very much for all your all the listeners. Hopefully you will uh, tell your friends, join San Diego County Gun Owners, and we'll be talking to you down the road right here on FM 961 AM 1170. But don't go anywhere. Dave Stahl show coming up next. We got Lou Ann Hammond on the line. You're going to love this right here on The Answer. Gun Sports Radio is sponsored by Love Radio Network.